Hello everyone, welcome again in Angman YouTube channel. In this video, we will learn how to simulate a retrograde condensate reservoir in Embal software. So we are now in Embal software. We go to tool and we select material balance. All right, and then let's go to options. For the reservoir fluid, we will select retrograde condensate. And for the tank model, single tank, PVT model, it cannot be selected. So we leave it as per default, production history by tank and compositional model, none. You can also input your user information and also your comments here in the section, done. And then we go to PVT, we click fluid properties. I've prepared my data. So if you have your data, you can exercise your own data or you can also follow me to use my data. All right, so for the separator pressure, zero PSIG. So the separator is under atmospheric condition. The reservoir temperature, 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Separator GOR of this value. All right, you can follow me with gas gravity of 0 0.745, tank GOR one, standard cubic feet per stock tank barrel, and tank gas gravity, the same value. You can copy and then paste it here. And for the condensate gravity, it's quite light, around 43 degrees IPI. Water salinity, 20,000 ppm, and dew point at reservoir temperature. This is the dew point with reservoir temperature of 300 degrees Fahrenheit and reservoir pressure of 6,000 PSIG. We have impurities in our gas for H2S0, CO2 2.33, and nitrogen of 0.31. The correlations for gas viscosity, we can use Li et al. And also I want to do matching. So we select match. I've prepared my data, so I'm just going to copy my data and paste the data on my table here. Right click and paste table. All right. Okay. If you want, you can follow my data here or you can just watch and see how to do it, okay? And then we go to match, click match, all right? It will be simple. We can just click calculate very fast, all right? You can also see the matching parameter for dew point, reservoir condensate gas ratio, vaporized condensate gas ratio, and so on and so forth. You can plot. Okay, and let's see for Li et al. For temperature of 300 Fahrenheit. Let's see, we want to see the dew point, all right? It will be a single value. So let's see, we want to see another parameter. Let's see reservoir condensate gas ratio, all right? This line is produced by Li et al. correlation. And we want to see and compare it with our actual data, actual laboratory data. We click this one, match data, temperature, and also reservoir CGR. All right, it's quite match, right? The red line is produced by the correlation, whereas the green line is generated from our laboratory data. So they are quite match. Okay, and that's good. So it means we can use the results from Li et al. correlation. Okay, you can also remove everything and just concentrate on comparing results from Li and Car et al. correlations. Okay, let's see the Z factor from Li and what about the Car et al. Oh, they are practically the same, right? It's good. Okay. So it strengthens the point that we can use Lee at all correlation. Okay. You can also 
do this thing, check and uncheck to show each plot. Okay, remove them. And then let's see Lee at all for the gas viscosity. All right. And what about the actual laboratory data? Yeah, practically quite match. But what about the results from car at all? Oh, it's very interesting. So based on gas viscosity results, we can conclude that car at all give us a better match compared to results from Lee et al. Okay, so we can use car et al instead of Lee et al correlation. Let's see for another parameter. Let's say we want to check for the gas formation volume factor from Lee et al correlation. All right, this is the results. And what about car et al? Yeah, the same. Okay, we can remove for the viscosity first and let's see the formation volume factor for gas from our laboratory data. Yeah, practically quite match. Okay, so we can conclude here. Done, done, done. And for the gas viscosity, we can use car at all. Okay, and make sure you check this one, use matching. So we will use the results from the matching. All right, so far so good. We can click done. All right. Now, of course, we can go to input to input our reservoir data. Okay, this is our tank data. So we need to input some data and information into this window. Tank type, of course, retrograde condensate. Name, let's say reservoir. And then for the temperature of the reservoir, 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Reservoir pressure or initial reservoir pressure of 6,000 PSIG. Porosity of 0.2 and the connect water saturation of 15%. All right, for water compressibility, we will use correlation. Original gas in place is 898.985. Start of production, 1 January 2010. All right. Okay, validate. Okay, then we go to water influx. Let's say first we don't know that we have water influx, so we can select none. Rock compressibility, we can use from correlation. Rock compaction, lipidicities as per default. For volume versus depth, there is no information regarding pore volume versus depth, so we can leave it as it is. And we need to input the relative permeability data. So I've prepared my data, I copy and, and then paste it here. All right, you can use my data for the residual saturation, endpoint and exponent. Okay, and of course we need to input our production history. Right click, paste table, all right. So you can see here, we have, of course, the data for time, reservoir pressure, cumulative oil produce. This is from the condensation, right? Because we have retrograde condensate reservoir. It's not a dry gas reservoir, you know, right? And then, of course, we have cumulative gas produced and cumulative water produced. Okay. And then we can validate. All right, so our data for tank input data is okay. You can also plot the production history. You can see the reservoir pressure against time and cumulative gas production. You can also see the cumulative oil production. Okay, first remove the cumulative gas production and let's see cumulative oil production. All right, 
Okay. Done. Okay. Now let's see if we go to history matching and we go to analytical method. All right. You can see here that results from analytical method, it's not matched with the actual data. So we need to do refinement to our reservoir. And the first thing we can analyze, maybe we can put or add water influx into our reservoir. So it means perhaps we can try, let's see if we want to add aquifer to our reservoir. All right. So this is the plot tank pressure against the calculated gas production. This is the actual data. If we don't have aquifer, if we don't have water influx, the reservoir pressure will drop faster. So because our actual reservoir pressure is higher, it means that maybe we have external pressure support, which might come from the aquifer. All right. Let's see also for the graphical method. P over Z, right? It's not match. Half lane all day. Coal. All right. We need to do a change with our reservoir. All right. And let's say after analyzing this aquifer, we select that Hers and Van Everdingen modified method is the best. All right, to mimic our aquifer performance. So we select this method, reservoir thickness. Let's say we have analyzed and now we can guess the parameter. And then after that, we can do refinement or matching within the MBAL software. So for the reservoir thickness, let's input 50 feet, reservoir radius 11,524 feet. Okay, and outer inner radius five, encroachment angle 180 degrees, and aquifer permeability of 51. All right, so far so good, done. All right, and go back to analytical method. All right, the red line indicates the model which doesn't have aquifer influx. Whereas the blue line is the results from the model with aquifer influx, but we cannot see the blue line. So let's maximize the plot again, right there. You can see the blue line overlays our actual data with very good match. Okay, very interesting, replot, all right. From here, we can say that the data from water influx data input is already a good data because we have resulted a perfect match between the results from analytical method or analytical aquifer with the actual data. Okay, to make sure we can go to regression. Okay, we can check and uncheck several parameters. Let's say we want to make sure the gas in place, outer inner radius, encroachment angle, and aquifer permeability. So it means we are quite confident with reservoir radius, reservoir thickness, and porosity, which have been inputted previously. All right, we press call and we wait for the matching. All right, so the matching or the iteration has been completed. We can accept all fits. Okay, and done. Yeah, still a perfect match. All right, so very, very interesting. This is the recap, tank temperature, tank pressure, tank porosity, and also for the aquifer. Let's see, history matching. Graphical plot, right? Half lane OD for water drive. We can say it's practically a perfect match. 
we go to method p over z all right it's okay it's quite normal if we cannot match our p over z plot with the actual p over z because there is actually water influx all right p over z plot is perfect for our volumetric reservoir so it means that our gas reservoir doesn't receive any water influx from external aquifer so if we have like this one it confirms that we have water drive or water influx let's see another method what about coal all right coal gives us a perfect match all right so this is the y-axis or vertical axis plotted against gp or cumulative gas and it gives us certainty regarding the gas in place okay method coal okay this is the coal plot without aquifer and what about this one roach yeah roach method also gives us a very good match all right very very interesting we can finish we can then plot the energy plot all right the majority of our drive mechanism of course the fluid expansion the expansion coming from the gas itself also a minor part coming from pore volume compressibility and we also have water influx of course because we have aquifer finish and you can also plot this one wd plot or wd function plot all right now we can also do simulation okay we press calculate okay we can plot this is the first thing we plot is of course our history we plot our tank pressure this is the tank pressure from the history and we want to do history matching by doing the simulation so let's see the results from the simulation tank pressure perfect match all right but it's easy what about the other parameter we go back to history cumulative oil production this is the data and what about the simulation we press the simulation again and we select cumulative oil production all right it's good right we can say that our history matching from the simulation is perfect and acceptable now after having the history matching we remove all and we want to see our average gut straight okay this is the results from the simulation all right and what about the oil rate or condensate rate okay so we have the constant gas rate here and here and after that after 2016 our gas rate declines our oil rate declines earlier starting from 2012 you can see here all right so far so good so we have completed our history matching section now we can go to our production prediction we press production prediction we select prediction setup all right first in predict section we select this one profile from production schedule no wells you see that we don't simulate any well in our model that's okay because we just want to concentrate on our reservoir all right so the production history comes from the reservoir itself okay for the options we use fractional flow model prediction start from the end of our production history okay make sure you choose this one 
and for the prediction n, we input as per required. Let's say in our case, we want to stop the prediction in January 1st, 2025. Okay, so far so good. Done. Go now to production and constraints. Now we input our constraint. Let's say in January 1st, 2020, I will produce my gas at rate of 30 million standard cubic feet per day. Breakthrough, 15%. Done. To make sure you can also go back to production and constraints and plot. Okay. This will be a constant rate, a rate of 30 million standard cubic feet per day. Finish, done. And then for the reporting schedule, we can select automatic, done, production prediction. Now we can run the prediction. Calculate. All right, very fast. Because we will start the prediction starting from the end of our history. So we start from January 1st, 2020, and the prediction will end at January 1st, 2025, as per imputed. This is the results. So we can see oil recovery factor from the condensate, gas recovery factor, oil rate, gas rate, water rate. This is the average production rate, P over Z, oil saturation. Very interesting, right? Also for the water gas ratio, condensate gas ratio, very, very interesting. Even the voidage, okay, reservoir voidage, aquifer influx, you can plot a lot of parameters from the prediction. Now we plot, okay, we plot starting from the simulation. Let's see the oil recovery factor or maybe we remove everything first. Simulation, oil recovery factor. Okay. And continue with the prediction, oil recovery factor. All right. This is the result for the oil or condensate recovery factor. Okay, so after producing from some years, for several years, okay, ending at 2025, we can produce or we can recover around 58%, okay, from our condensate in place. You can also predict the reservoir pressure. Reservoir pressure and prediction, All right. The reservoir pressure at 2025 is around 800 PSIG. And of course, we are interested in the gas recovery factor, simulation, and then prediction. All right. Of course, usually for gas reservoir, we can recover high recovery factor. In this case, above 90%. 90% of the gas in place we can recover. All right. Very, very interesting. Close. Done. You can also see the tank results, which is quite the same with run prediction section. All right, so we can recap now. In this video, we have learned about modeling a condensate gas reservoir in MBAL software. We have done history matching with analytical method, graphical method, and then the simulation. And we have done the forecasting after inputting some constraints. All right, so that's all. I hope all the learnings are useful. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to press like, subscribe, and share to your friends. And see you again in the next Embal videos. Thank you.